Are you Node.js logs messy, hard to read or missing critical info? In this video I'll show you how to configure Winston, the ultimate logging library for Node.js, to make your logs clean, powerful and easy to manage. Hi, my name is Alex, I'm a senior software engineer with years of experience in JavaScript and Node.js. My goal is to help you become a confident and stress-free developer by increasing your skills and proficiency. Let's get started. I am in the Node.js and Express app. Let's go ahead and add logging to it. As usual, the link to the GitHub repository that contains the code will be in the description. Logging is a critical component of any application. I'm not going to go deep into the reasons why you want to have logging, which may include debugging, monitoring, auditing, error tracking, and traceability. The main thing you have to keep in mind though, do not log sensitive information such as secrets, passwords, and personally identifiable information or PII. Now with a warning out of the way, let's go ahead and install Winston library with npm install Winston. Next, let's go ahead and create logger.ts file in src folder. In this file we're going to import Winston from Winston and config from our configuration file. First, we're going to define log levels, and the first one with the highest priority will be error, then warning, then info, then HTTP, and finally debug. Next, we will create a constant logger and assign to it Winston's create logger function. We're going to pass a configuration object to it. The object will include log levels that we just defined, current log level that comes from the configuration, format, where we are going to format errors by logging the error stack. The log format will also include timestamps, and you can format your time however you want. Since I mostly log to the console, I will use printf. We're going to destruct timestamp, level, message, log metadata, and stack, and put them in the following order. First timestamp, then level, then log metadata, if it exists, and then message, and finally, if there is an error, we will log out the error stack. The last step will be to create console transport and add it to the transports array. And speaking of transports, Winston score transports include console, output to the Node.js console, file, store logs in files, and HTTP, stream logs to HTTP endpoint. Other options include stream, output to Node.js stream, which allows for further customization with the third-party transports like Elasticsearch, Loggy, Data Log, or AWS S3. As I mentioned before, I mostly log to console because I deploy my applications to AWS on ECS containers or Lambda function. AWS will automatically take the console logs and port them to CloudWatch. However, if you want to learn how to write your logs to log files using Winston, stick around and I will show you that as well. We are all set. Let's default export our logger. Next, we will open config.ts file and define the log level. The default log level will be info. Now let's try our logger in action and log out some information. We will go to routes we want tasks, task controller, and in the list tasks function we will log out debug message requesting tasks. Let's spin up the dev server with npm run dev and see what we got. We're gonna go to API test.htp file and make a call to get tasks. As you can see, we have get tasks log, which comes from Morgan. However, we don't see our log that says requesting tasks. This is because we logged out the message with a level of debug. However, since we didn't define log level in the environment, the default log level priority is info that we set in config.ts file. And since the debug has a lower priority than info, the requesting tasks message is not shown. In the .env file, let's put the log level as debug. We will also add log level in the variable to .env.example file. Let's go ahead and save the changes, restart the dev server, and make a request again. And now you can see that requesting tasks message appears in the console. The way we configured our logger is that we can also add the log metadata. Sometimes you may need to add some additional information to your logs, such as request ID, account, or user ID. Let's go ahead and see how we can use log metadata for that purpose. 
But before we do that, if you are learning something new from this video, please like and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. In the tasks controller file, in the list tasks function, let's create another log message and add user ID to it. To do that, we need to create a child logger and add log metadata with the user ID. After that, we can use this child logger in our function to log out the messages. So let's go ahead and save the changes, go to API test.htp file and make the request again. And as you can see, we now have another log debug statement that says user with ID is requesting tasks. Since we put log metadata before the actual message in printf statement, we got a coherent sentence, but in the real world, your log messages will look a little more pragmatic than that. Logging into the console is great. However, in some cases, you may want to log to a file. If you are going to do that, I suggest rotating your log files. Let's go ahead and install Winston Daily Rotate File Library that will help us to do just that. In the logger.cs file, we will import Winston Daily Rotate file and define a new transport. We will create a variable file rotate transport and instantiate a daily rotate file with the following configuration. File name will be logs application with the date. Naturally, our log files will live in the logs folder. The date pattern property will have a format of the date. Zipper archive will be true. Max size 20 megabytes and max files will be 14 days. A transport can also have format property that will override the format we defined earlier. For the file transport, we will also log out error stack, use timestamps. However, instead of printf, we will use JSON. Our file rotate transport is good to go. Let's add it to the logger. One more thing to keep in mind, if you're logging to log files, you don't want to push them to GitHub. Let's go ahead and add the logs folder to .gitignore file to prevent sending it and its contents to the GitHub repo. Let's start the dev server and make another request. In the root of our application, we now have logs folder. Let's go ahead and open application.log file that Winston just created. As you can see, we have the same two log messages that got logged to the console, except for that they are in JSON format. One more thing that I want to show you is how to integrate Winston with other loggers. Sometimes you can use other loggers such as Morgan to log HTTP requests. We're actually doing just that in our application. That get v1 tasks log message is coming from Morgan. But as you may have noticed, this log message doesn't appear to be in the log file and it is formatted a bit differently. Like you can see that it doesn't have the timestamp. In order for this message to appear in the log file or other destinations, depending on your transport and for it to be formatted in the same way as the other log messages, we need to create Morgan middleware to use Winston logger. We're going to import Morgan from Morgan and logger from our logger.cs file. We will format the Morgan log message by having the HTTP method URL content length of the response and response time. Next, we will write the message to the stream using the logger with HTTP level. As you may recall, this level is just one step above the debug. So with the current setting of log level that is debug, the messages with HTTP log level will be also logged out. You don't have to necessarily use HTTP log level for Morgan messages. You can use debug or info or whatever log level you want, depending on your requirements. Finally, we're going to export default Morgan middleware. Now let's go to server.cs file. Instead of Morgan dev, we can put Morgan middleware. We will also import it from middleware Morgan middleware and delete Morgan import because we don't need it anymore. Let's start the dev server, go to API test.htp file and make a request. We can see that our request is logged in the same format as other logs with a timestamp in front of it. And if we open the application.log file again, now we can see the log message from Morgan in it as well. 
If you like, you can play a little bit more with log levels. Let's change the log level in that .env file to HTTP. This will prevent debug messages from being logged. We can confirm this by starting the dev server and making a request. Now you can see that only HTTP request is logged. And this is how you can add Winston Logger to your application. With Winston Logger, you have the ability to send your logs to different services using transports. One of such services is AWS CloudWatch. If you would like to learn more about AWS CloudWatch, please check out this video.